Hello. In this video, I want to show you how you can set up and monitor your IT infrastructure with Anturis Monitoring Service and how you can use this service to troubleshoot any issues that could happen with your infrastructure. First, we're going to create an account on Anturis Web Service. We're going to complete this simple registration form. We've immediately received an email prompting us to verify our registration. After we've verified our registration, we can immediately log on to the service. First, we're going to set up monitoring of any web service. Monitoring can be started with just a few clicks. We're going to be monitoring a website. In order to do this, all we have to do is specify the website URL, domain name or IP address. The component corresponding to the website has now been created, along with the two monitors that will monitor the website using HTTP and ping respectively. The monitors are currently grey because not enough data has been collected to determine the status of the website. Data collection has already started however, and we can see the two locations from which data has been collected, from Berlin and from Moscow. Anturis Web Service will automatically discover the location of the site being monitored and will allocate the monitoring of the site to the nearest public Anturis agency. Anturis has several locations in the world from which monitoring of any site is possible. The data that is collected from public Anturis agencies can be observed directly or by referring to the chart. Here we can already see several points. Each point corresponds to a single measurement and after some time we will see a graph that in this case shows the latency of ping. Another monitor will show you the latency of HTTP requests. We have now set up monitoring from external locations and if ping and HTTP requests should fail, the customer will be notified of this by email, text message or voice alert. Another option to monitor this simple site, instead of using an external location, is to monitor it from the server that hosts the site itself. To monitor it, we need to set up a specialized piece of software called Anturis Agent on the server. The installation is done by simply copying and pasting the code line into the remote shell on the server. The script will now download Anturis Agent, install it, and connect it to your account on the web service. After the software has been installed and connected to the server, a component corresponding to the server will appear in the infrastructure view. And some basic monitoring will be set up for the server, collect a separate load and free up disk space. You can of course set up additional monitors for the server. The most powerful monitor is the custom shell monitor, which I will show you how to set up. The agent has now been installed. As you can see, the agent appears in the list of private account agents. In the infrastructure view, you can see the component that corresponds to the server with monitoring of CPU and free disk space has now been created. So as you can see, the server has already collected enough data to show the status of the component and of the monitors. After a while, these monitors will be green as well. We can easily create another monitor for the server. For example, let's create a monitor that shows the total number of processes simultaneously happening on the server. The monitor we're going to create is called Custom Shell Monitor. 
The purpose of this monitor is simply to execute the command periodically and returning the results of this command to the server. For example, to calculate the number of processes, we type in a simple Unix command. Here it shows us that there are about 150 processes currently running. We can set the limit of this number by typing in that the number of running processes on the server should be less than 200, and if this number is exceeded, the customer will be notified. The monitor has now been created and has already started to receive data. Here it shows the data. Within the infrastructure view, you can set up the dependency of the components. For example, we can, by linking them, make sure that the web server is dependent on this service. So in just five minutes, we've set up monitoring of the web server for two external locations and monitoring of the server by Anturis agent. Let's now have a look at the more complex infrastructure. This infrastructure represents the internal infrastructure in our development office. Our office is connected to the internet via ISP. The server itself is monitored by our Anturis agent. We have an application used in the development of a software which is dependent on the Apache web server and on the MySQL database. In addition, we have an internal email server that relies on a server elsewhere. All these components are monitored by monitors that correspond to servers. For example, the IMAP and the SMTP monitors are used to monitor emails in our office. Apache is monitored via a TCP monitor that sends the results periodically to the default TCP port. MySQL is monitored to a special MySQL monitor that periodically pull information about how the MySQL service operates. The application Redmine is monitored by a HTTPS monitor. This monitor periodically connects to the application and you can check from the front page of the application that it contains the word Redmine. Let's now see how Anturis service can help us troubleshoot the issues that could happen with this infrastructure. For example, once I stop the MySQL component on the server, the Anturis service generates an incident for this event, and the incident collects all problems that happens with all the infrastructure components simultaneously. The two components that were involved in this incident are the MySQL server, because it was stopped, and the second component is the Redmine application, which stopped working properly, because it couldn't interact with the MySQL database. We could, from this incident, get more details about the incident. For example, which exact errors happened with this monitor. The problem with the MySQL monitor was that it wasn't possible to connect to the database. It's quite natural because it was stopped. The other error was with the Redmine component, and Redmine application cites HTTP error 502, which means there is something wrong with the application. The other problem was that the word Redmine was missing from the test of this page. So, looking at these two errors, the error with the MySQL component and the error with the Redmine component, the administrator could easily determine the root cause of this incident. Let's look at another incident. I've stopped the Apache service. We have two components involved in this incident, Apache and Redmine. But the errors that were returned by the monitors take another form. For example, the error with the Redmine application was that it was not possible to reach the main page of the application. So there was no HTTP response for this application at all. There was a similar error with the Apache component. It wasn't possible to connect to the HTTP port. So 
so the description of this error is completely different from the errors of the MySQL incident, but the administrator has enough data to determine the root cause of this incident as well. Let's have a look at another incident. This incident was created by disconnecting our office from the ISP. There is a problem with each component because it's impossible to send any data to the server. We can see here that no data could be collected from Anturis agent. The error from the ISP could be diagnosed by checking for errors on the ISP component. Here it says that the ping attempt failed. So by investigating this error, the root cause of the problem could easily be determined by the administrator. By simply looking at the screen and looking at the errors in the components, the administrator could determine that the problem was interconnectivity of the entire infrastructure. By the way, an important feature of our service is that the administrator will be notified only once during the course of the problem. The administrator will be notified about the incident as a whole, rather than about failures of each component or failures of each monitor. This will decrease the amount of email alerts the administrator will receive regarding such a huge incident. For example, another monitoring service could send notifications about failures of each monitor, which in this case would mean about 15 email alerts. With this service, there will only be two alerts, one announcing the incident itself, and one announcing the incident has been solved and that the infrastructure is working again. To get information about how the infrastructure behaves during any given period of time, you can refer to the periodical reports. Reports are sent daily, weekly or monthly, and from this report we can see which component works fine and which component fails, and how many problems there were with each component or monitor, as well as the downtime for each component or monitor. For example, on the 12th of November, there were two problems with the dev.enters.com component, and the total downtime was about 11 minutes. The administrator can receive daily emails with this information. It's also possible for other people to subscribe to these reports, so another member of the team could receive a monthly report of infrastructure behavior. Another person can easily be added. And now it's possible for this person to subscribe to reports. It's also possible to make a person responsible for certain components only, rather than the whole infrastructure. So the person only will receive notifications about specific components. For example, this person will only receive notifications about the MySQL server, but won't be notified about incidents in the infrastructure. It's also possible to configure how each person will be alerted. For example, it's possible to set the service to notify the person via email, text message, or by phone call, depending on the severity of the problem.